girls. Welcome to Miss Judy Sunday School Room at Letterbox Badges Church. Glad to have you all again. We've got another lesson coming to you. Uh, we use our Bible and felt board uh, to teach you all, all about Jesus and some stories that the Lord puts on our heart to tell you about. And tonight's story is about Daniel's faithfulness to the Lord. Daniel loved the Lord, and he was just a great guy. And here you see Daniel right here praying. You see in the picture of him praying. Let's find out more about what's going on in the story, okay? It said, God blessed Daniel. He made Daniel very, very, very wise. The king planned to make Daniel ruler over all the land. So he really loved him, boys and girls. Now, the other wise men, these gentlemen over here, they got jealous. Y'all ever got jealous? Jealous is when you want something somebody else has, you know, or you just like, wish you had it, you know. That's what jealous means. And, um, uh, they tried to find something bad about Daniel. So they're just like, I'm jealous because the king's going to make him ruler. I don't want him to be ruler. Even though all Daniel did, he was a good guy and he was just faithful to the Lord. So they got really, really jealous. And so he always prayed to God and he always obeyed God. And these men could not find anything bad. So they had to come up with a plan. If he is so good, what are we going to do? And... So they thought and they thought on it because he prayed three times a day. He opened his window and prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And they all knew that. And they said, let's make a new law. So they're going to make a, a new law to make it to where Daniel can get in trouble because there was nothing wrong with what Daniel was doing. He's a good guy. But there's some people out there that don't want good people to succeed. And they said, let's say that everyone has to pray to you. So they're telling the king this, okay? That, hey, let's make everybody pray to you. If they don't, we will throw them in the lion's den. Oh, my goodness. Here's the lion's den, boys and girls. There. Looky there. Ooh. Nobody wants to be thrown in a den of lions. Do you all like lions? Ooh. They might be good from afar off, but I don't want them close up. Mm-mm-mm. So... They said, these little guys were so jealous of Daniel, they went to the king and they said, let's make up a new law and the, anybody that don't worship you, let's throw them in the den of lions. Well, the king thought, hey, that's great. Let people worship me. That's good. No, 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 boys and girls. Who do we worship? Who? Yeah, that's right. The true God of heaven. And that is it. We don't worship any idols like our last story with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we don't worship kings. We shouldn't worship anything. We should always put God first. That's all of this lesson is simply telling you in life. We need to put God first in everything we do. And But the king thought that sounded good, so he made the new law. And Daniel heard about the new law, but he went to his room and prayed anyway. Daniel wasn't listening because Daniel knew the one that had power on earth was the God of heaven. And he was the most powerful person there was, and he loved him he, like we do. Like we love the Lord. And, and God, we love him so much. Daniel loved him that much. He just prayed that many times a day. And uh, now the men knew Daniel would pray. So they saw him and they took him to the king. Now remember, the king loved Daniel. He loved him. He was making him ruler over everything. So I can only imagine how he felt when he found out that the law he just made was going to put someone he loved in the den of lions. And I guess the purpose of the den of lions, boys and girls, is the lions would eat you up. I don't want to be around them to find out, and I'm sure you all don't either. So they said, let's throw Daniel into the lion's den. And the king was so sorry. He liked Daniel, but he couldn't change his law. The man's plan had worked. So once you put that decree on it, he couldn't change it as much as he wanted to. It was the law. So as much as he loved Daniel... And knew then when he knew that it was Daniel in trouble, that he was wrong for what he did. Back then, they couldn't take it back. So what's going to happen to poor Daniel? Let's find out. They threw Daniel into the lines. So they threw him in there, okay? And the next morning, the king got up early. He worried all night long, wondering what has happened to Daniel. Will his God save him? So what do you think, boys and girls? Do you think that Daniel survived it or did the lions eat him up let me hear you what do you think is that what you all think well let's find out okay the next morning the king got up early and he ran to that lion's den 
And he said, Daniel. Y'all say it with me. Can y'all say that? Say, Daniel. Yeah, that's it. Did your God save you? Okay, now you say that again with me, okay? So ready? Daniel, did your God save you? Well, let's find out. He yells back. Here he is, boys and girls. Look, he made it. God saved him. He didn't. He didn't. He said, yes, King, yes. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouth. Oh, my goodness. So he heard his prayer. So Daniel that was praying, God heard him. Boys and girls, when you pray, God hears you. Don't doubt it. This is proof. Daniel prayed. He didn't listen when they told him to do something else. These kings, the, you know, they just think they're powerful, kind of like the way our, honestly, the way our, let's just say our government officials are doing right now with us. And, but he knew better. So we know better. We got to follow God, just like Daniel did. And he prayed to the true God. He didn't pray to, and, to the king. And what happened when he was through in that lion's den? What happened, boys and girls? Didn't he? What did God send? He sent a what? Yes, he sent an angel, closed the mouths of the lions, and did not. And the king was so happy. He took Daniel out of the den and was just so thankful that God had saved him because he made a bad decision. He loved Daniel. But these men were, that were so conniving knew, and they just wanted rid of Daniel, so they done what they could. And as I sit and tell this story, what goes through my head is our current situation. Uh... And everything that's going on in our in our in our communities and in our United States of America right now. So without going in detail with the young children and parents, just put this into reality of what's happened now. Not much different uh, than what people are doing. I mean, they don't want us coming even to the Lord's house. I understand there's a virus. We need to watch yourself. But condemning the ones that still choose to. Mm. If the Lord I know. It's so powerful that he can send an angel to close the mouths of the lions to save Daniel. And in the last lesson we found out with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were through in a fire that was so hot it should have burned them right up right away. But it didn't. Why? And then the king looks in. What does he see? He's a fourth man. Who's that fourth man? It was Jesus. And they come out and don't even smell like smoke. You all can't get around a, a fire pit without coming back and smelling like smoke. I know you can't. I can't. Didn't have a burn on them. That's how powerful the God we serve is. And if you're out there and you don't know the God I know, I pray you do before it's over with. Find you a preacher, reach out to me. There's plenty of them all over Facebook right now. Find you one. There's many good, my preacher, Shane Gabbard, find him. He will gladly help lead you to the Lord if you don't know. But I will tell you this, if he's dealing with you, it's real simple. If you feel a feeling you never had before, it's God. And he's telling you he wants to save you. That's all he's wanting to do. And all you got to do is say yes. He takes care of all the rest. You don't have to tell him everything you've done. He knows. He knows everything. We don't have to tell him anything. All we have to do is say yes. And then he comes and lives in your heart. Oh, and how wonderful that is, boys and girls, when he comes and lives in your heart. It helps you to live a better life with the Lord. You can't do it prior to that. Judy couldn't do it on her own. No, I couldn't when I was lost. And I was lost once. So it's not a shame to be lost. Everybody's lost at one point. Well, it's a shame to stay lost if the Lord deals with your heart. Accept him before it's too late, little boys and girls. Because that's all that matters in these last times that we're living in. It's just is finding Jesus and serving Jesus. That's what I want to be caught doing. It's just serving my Lord. So you boys and girls out there, how do you serve the Lord? You pray and ask God to help you. You tell other kids about Jesus. Not every kid knows about Jesus. They might not know about these Bible lessons. Maybe you have friends and you want to share these videos and say, look, Miss Judy will tell you about the Bible. And like I said, we're just doing this while you all can't get in here. I'll do as long as the Lord wants me to. But you kids may reach other kids that may help them find Jesus. They don't know anything about Jesus. That's, there's, everybody out there has a talent for the Lord. Find your talent. Find what God wants you to do and do it. Um, I'm doing what God wants me to do right now, and this is for you all and for him. Not because I want to do it, you know, just to be doing it because everybody's doing videos. It's because the Lord laid it on my heart, and I know this is what I have to do. 
And if he's laying something on your heart, please do it as well, boys and girls. Whatever it is, pray about it. If you're confused, go to your mommies and daddies. Tell them what you think the Lord might be wanting you to do. And do it, okay? After you talk with them. Maybe you need to talk to a preacher. Like I said, my preacher, Shane Gabbard, would love to speak with any of you all. And there's other pastors all throughout. You may be in a different state. Find you a good preacher that you can talk to. And um, find the Lord. Now's the time for it. So, we want to be more like Daniel, and we want to pray to the Lord. He prayed three times a day, every day. So, there's people out there watching you. So, sometimes it just might be how you live your life, and they want to see Christ in you. And if you're out there being kind to other kids, and not hitting, and not punching other kids, they're like, wow, what is it about that little kid? Why does that little kid do that? Hmm. Did you just see that little kid share their candy? That was their last Reese cup, and they gave their last Reese cup away. My granddaughter Haven loves Reese cups. I don't know if she can give her last one or not, but she might would. And um, we should share with others. Do you share your toys? They may look and see two little kids over here playing at your daycare you're at, and they're like, wow, they just gave their favorite toy and let them share it. We should share our toys. There's so many things you kids can be doing, and just being good for your mommies and daddies is real, real, real important, okay? So make sure you're being really good for them. The Bible, like I said, wants us to. Your parents read Ephesians chapter 6 and uh, teach the children that uh, chapter. Uh, the first verse is children obey your parents for this is right in the Lord. And that's what you need to teach those things and explain to them why. They need to understand it, okay? So now we need to sing a song. And what song should we sing? How about Jesus loves me? Because Jesus loves everybody, don't he? Yes, he does. Are you ready? Ready to sing it? Okay. All right, ready? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Very good, you all done so good, all right. What about Zacchaeus? Do you all even know the story about Zacchaeus? We may tell that one day. Uh, but it goes like this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down from going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Now Zacchaeus was a wee little man, but a happy man was he. For he had found the Lord that day, and a very happy man was he. A very happy man was he. So Zacchaeus climbed up a tree because he was coming by, and he was so short he couldn't see Jesus. So he climbed up thinking, now Jesus ain't going to see me. Jesus knows everything, boys and girls. And he looked up and he seen him. He said, he said, come down. And he went home with him. So Zacchaeus found the Lord that day. And what a wonderful day that was for him. That what a wonderful day. What a wonderful day is for anybody when they let Jesus in their heart and, and he saves them. And let's see. Let's do one last song. Uh, let me see if I can stand up on this one. All right. We're going to do the Jesus Hokey Pokey. Y'all ready? That's one of my grandbabies' favorites. Sophie and Aubrey and Haven, they love it. Lincoln and Carly, they'll love it eventually. And then these Sunday school kids in here, they all love it too. So y'all ready to do it with me? Raylan, are you out there watching? You ready to do it? What about you, Sawyer and Xavier and Summer and, gosh, Ava? And I don't know if I can remember everybody or not. Are all you all out there doing it? You ready? Put your right hand in, put your right hand out, put your right hand in, and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your left hand in, you put your left hand out, you put your left hand in, and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your right leg in, you put your right leg out, you put your right leg in, and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. 
You put your left leg in, you put your left leg out, you put your left leg in and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your head in, you put your head out, you put your head in and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Ready for this last part? You put your whole self in, you put your whole self out, you put your whole self in and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what it's all about, boys and girls. Give your heart to Jesus and then he turns your life around. You don't do it. He makes you be nicer to other kids and just gives you everything that you could ever need. He's your best friend you'll ever have, boys and girls. When you don't feel like you've got anybody else, when you're laying in your bed at night and you might be afraid. Some of you might be afraid of monsters, and they ain't no monsters, by the way, but you get scared of things. Pray to God. He's your best friend. He will always be right there, just like that when we ask. You just got to believe and have faith and know he's right there and can help anything. So that's what's so amazing about the God we serve. He is able to help anything. We just got to believe. He wants you boys and girls to have faith in him and know he can, okay? So we'll end with our, um, we'll do our uh, prayer requests we always do. So I'll go around the table and ask each one of you if you have a prayer request. And you would be telling your prayer request, so I'm going to ask you now, okay? Boys and girls, do you have a prayer request? Speak it to the camera. Let me hear it. Go ahead. Okay, now I can't hear it, but God can. So God can hear exactly what you need, and you have faith. That means you believe what you're asking he can do, okay? That's all faith is, is believing it, okay? So put your hands together like this. Ready? Do it again like that, see? And you bow, and you just say, well, let's just say thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you give us. I want to thank you, but Lord, I have needs in my home, and whatever those needs are, will you supply it according to your will, Lord? I have family that are sick. I have family that are lost. And I just love my family. And, Lord, we just want you to help everybody. Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all the kids say what? What do you say? Amen. That's right. Very good, boys and girls. Thanks for another lesson today. Thanks for staying with me for a little bit. And um, don't forget, parents, if any of y'all want one of these lessons that I do when I post, not these particular lessons, but I post in my page the little Sunday school pamphlets uh, messaged me on Facebook. Like I said, I had 10, I may have 12. I don't know that I can actually send out to you all. Uh, if the kids want to have it, you know, and actually color and do stuff besides just looking at it on there, uh, message me on there with your address and I'll send it, okay? And uh, just thank you all so much for being with me today until we can meet again. Keep praying. God can move and he can put us back in the church houses and that's where my face at. He's going to do it if us Christians humble ourselves and get back to God, he can heal our land and heal all this. So let's ask him to do it, okay? But it starts with us. Thank you. Bye.